vitality equals power minus obstructions. This is Arnold Eretz's formula in his book, The Mucusless Diet. Uh, and I'd like to take it and uh, talk about it in a metaphysical sense. So again, the formula uh, is vitality equals power minus obstructions. And he, the obstructions he was referring to is the mucus in the body, the toxins in the body. And once you remove the obstructions, then vitality equals power. And, uh, you know, he was a big proponent of fasting and he used to do, you know, these, you know, hike up these really big mountains uh, in a fasted state after he got his body really cleaned and removed all the obstructions. He was essentially one of the early pioneers of uh, the concept, which is an ancient concept of breatharianism. Essentially, he believed, you know, that human beings uh, don't actually need to eat food. In fact, what they need to do is simply remove the obstructions. And that the best way to do it is fasting. Uh, so, anyway, uh, I'm not going to actually talk about the food element, uh, or I will, but I will include it in uh, a greater sense, in a greater uh, paradigm, if you will, that is includes food, but includes so much more than food. So, take this equation, vitality equals power minus obstructions. Now, I'm going to change it a little bit here talk about the metaphysical implications of it and say Tao equals power minus obstructions or energy equals power minus obstructions. I mean, vitality is, is synonymous since, you know, it's the same thing. Vitality, when you refer to somebody and say that person is vital, you're saying that person has a lot of energy. It's, it's an energetic person is a vital person. So let's say energy, which is Tao. So energy equals Vitality minus obstructions. And the obstructions that I'm referring to here uh, are going to be thoughts. It's going to be your mind. So your mind is the, the, the originator of the obstructions. And it is what gets in the way of the, the energy. Okay, so then if obstructions are removed, if mind is removed, if thoughts are removed, then the, you end up with vitality equals power or vitality or energy equals power so it is it is just you end up with energy just energy that's it nothing but energy so so then now how does that relate to food and how does that include food because if you start if you begin to meditate and you begin to really observe what's going on in your mind and you begin to observe the freak show that is taking place uh, moment to moment all the time pretty much Soon you will come to realize that also food, you know, thoughts of food, that where do they begin? It's in your mind. You get a little, uh, an image, a visual, a thought form appears of uh, an ice cream cone. And then that thought form is seductive and lucrative and it pulls you in. And next thing you know, you're in a supermarket and you, you're covered with ice cream, you're covered with ice cream all over your face but where did that originate and now of course what happens is is that food it causes mucus in the body toxins etc obstructions that are uh, restricting the flow of energy okay but where did that originate from originally that that was a thought form okay that was a thought form that you ended up following enough that it became a physical obstruction so if you want to follow the obstructions all the way to their original source, that would be your mind, that would be your thoughts. And so if you would like, and I'm sure you do, uh, to have more vitality, more energy, uh, and be more of your, who you are because you are pure energy, then it becomes quite clear that the objective that the aim is to quiet down your mind, is to quiet down the freak show, the drunken monkey that is essentially all the thoughts that are appearing in your mind, all kinds of thoughts, right? Like I'll be sitting down in meditation and, and you know, I used to watch a lot of soccer and stuff. And then I'll have a thought form pop in my head. Like I wonder who's first in the Premier League right now. You know, and then if you just allow that thought to be, it ends up 
leaving and the next one comes 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 and after a while of observing they come less and less and less and the less and less they come to you all these different thought forms like oh you know what would taste good right now banana chips or uh, oh boy I could really you know I could really use a, a nice smoothie bowl right now or something you know all these thoughts you know about everything right everything everything Oh, I wonder, uh, I wonder why so and so have didn't get back to me, or I wonder, I wonder if that girl likes me. You know, I wonder what's gonna happen in my future. Am I gonna get that job? Am I gonna get that job? Does he like me? Does she like me? Did I do the right thing? Should I behave differently in society? Am I too annoying? All these, you know, everything, every all kinds of thoughts, right? If you observe them enough, they begin to just kind of get embarrassed in a way. Because the thought is the, your ego. So that's your ego. When we, we say the ego, is ego is just your thoughts, your storylines that, that's going on in your head. All the scripts that are either uh, being written, being prepared, being anticipated, being reminiscent, reminiscent on, reflected on, or remembered in the form of memories. That's all just thoughts. That's all just obstructions, really, when, you, when it comes down to it. And pretty soon you calm down and it calms down and before you know it uh, you feel a sense of energy and that it may require a, a set of a specific set of time of meditation before you begin this uh, to feel the rise of this energy uh, what I have been doing lately is I have been humming humming I've been basically a hummingbird a human hummingbird lately and the humming just clears away everything so I hum and because I have this clock fast thing going on I don't even time my meditations anymore but I hum I hum and hum and hum and hum and hum. And it, it begins to clear up everything, purifies. It purifies everything I feel. Thoughts calm down. And then I feel this sense of energy rising in my body. And I, it, it rises so rapidly that I have to get up and move it. And I have, I sort of, my hand sort of just uh, caresses and, and, and touches all parts of my body because I feel it moving. So I go like this, you know. I remember my grandma used to do this as a way of blessing us, right? And it, it is a way of moving the energy, but I feel the energy just moving and it's just sort of both of my hands, you know, I take off my everything because I have, I have to really push through the energy and I have to really feel it everywhere. And, and it, But that happens after a while of me humming and sort of the mind calms down, the energy begins to flow. And so the original obstruction of everything, the, the obstructive thing that is taking away or let's say restricting the flow of energy are your thoughts. And so everything is a manifestation of that. So food, eating too much, cravings, etc. Uh, the desire to eat, the desire to, you know, as, uh, gratify yourself with food. Uh, or the desire to gratify yourself with uh, a little greasing of, of your pipe. Okay, a little uh, moment of glory there that pops in like, oh, you know, be nice right now to uh, go on Pornhub and watch this, this and that. Insert your favorite way of getting off and it'll feel really good, right? Again, just a thought form, a thought form. Now you could follow the thought form, you could just let it be or you could either go on doing your humming or whatever it is, observing your thoughts or your, your chanting. And pretty soon the thought just goes away and the mind continues to calm down the more you just calm down and you do your chanting your mantra your meditation you're just simply watching the breath whatever your preferred method is calms down calms down calms down and pretty soon I don't know when exactly you know again I don't time the meditations anymore I'm sort of trying to live more in timelessness but whatever however your mind is cluttered if your mind isn't that cluttered it may happen soon like I know if I meditate and my mind's already calm the energy starts to flow pretty quickly. But pretty soon you feel this, yeah, you know, energy just rising. Rising and you'll feel you'll, you'll feel in your belly. I often when it when it rises, I start to tap on my belly. And then tap on my chest like this. And then like I said, run my hands all over my body because I feel this energy flowing. So I just run I, I run it like this. Like I just feel the energy flowing so much. And that's because I'm not there's not many, much activity going on in the mind, not much obstructions. As a result of these practices that calm the mind and then next thing you know boom i am entering the kingdom of heaven and i am in the flow of things i am in the flow of the way i am in the flow of the Tao. 
and I have energy to walk, I have energy to do this, I have energy to do that. And as soon as I feel the energy beginning to drain, I know that the mind is going back to its habits of thinking about things. And you know, one of the things with the clock fasting is I don't, I don't really think what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day or what it, what, what it is, because there's no time. But that, that, I mean, as soon as I started the clock fast, which I talked about in a previous video, essentially I'm not looking at the clock unless necessary. Like today I have to teach classes, but even then, I, yesterday I set an alarm half an hour before to just once it clicks then I, I get on I get on Leela there and I get back home to teach you know so even then I'm still even with the days I, I only teach two days a week even that I'm still uh, keeping that timelessness to the best of my ability and because I'm not thinking about what I'm going to do later or this or that there's less thoughts less obstruction so I have more energy as a result so that's another practice you could uh, you could do a clock fast uh, and so, but anything that makes you think, like, you know, when you look at the clock, suddenly I should do this, I should do that. Now it's my time to eat. Now it's this. I'm not even thinking when I'm going to eat or this. I, if I feel like, okay, right now, go grab a meal, grab a meal, you know, whatever. Uh, but I'm not thinking. I, I didn't think about making this video. I drove on my bike and I said, wow, it's a beautiful, inspiring view here, right? I, I sat down here, got off my phone and I'm making a video. It's because there's less thoughts, less obstructions, right? Of course, I meditated, you know, this morning, spent... A great deal of the morning meditating so uh, as soon as I feel the energy begins to drain or I know that the mind's going back to its old habits of thinking and, and, and being in time and what am I gonna do now or what is this or I'm bored or that or blah, 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 right then I just again sit down and hum hum some more hum 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 until I feel the again I, I sort of have this feedback system now Whenever I feel my hands are beginning to just go all over my body because the energy is flowing and I, I begin to, the humming rises up like it's, it goes from I start and it's the energy is low because there's a lot of thoughts and obstructions, right? So again, the vitality equals power minus obstructions. A lot of obstructions, not a lot of power. Okay, I got to remove the obstructions. So I sit down and first the humming is, you know, it's, it's low tone, right? It's just, um, right, I'm just trying to clear things up, thoughts begin to pop up, and I just start to let them go, I keep humming, I keep humming, I keep humming, I keep humming, and after a while, uh, you know, a hum sort of comes in with a lot of power, so it goes like, um, And I know the energy is rising. I know the energy is rising now because it just all spontaneously happens. And it rises up and it's hum after another and it's loud and it's oh. And I start to feel the vibrations in my belly pretty soon spontaneously. I'm tapping on my belly. I'm tapping on my chest. I'm moving like this. Oh, I, I get up because this is the energy is flowing so much. You know, so then I know. Then I know now the mind's calming down. The energy can finally come in. There's room for the energy to flow now. Less restriction. And so again, when I feel I'm being drained again, I know the mind's going back to its habits. I'm in the process of rewiring the mind uh, and uh, to rewire it to just not think much, to just be quiet, be calm. And that is basically through meditation. That's why I stopped microdosing because I want to do this now, you know, uh, as a thing, as a thing, as a, you know, without having to use anything external. So, because the microdosing was taking care of that for me, you see? It would, it would take something, but you know, again, I now that I stop microdosing, I realize that there are certain negative uh, consequences on the body of using uh, microdosing, but that's for another video, anyway. So, uh, my point here is that once you understand how the energy system works, once you understand that energy is infinite and it's everywhere and it's waiting to come in, it's waiting to come in, it wants to come in, baby. It wants the Shakti wants to rise. She wants to shower you with love and uh, joy and beauty and vitality. And she is waiting. She is waiting. The Shakti is waiting. To, she wants to rise up and meet the Father. She wants to rise up and meet Shiva. They love each other. Shiva and Shakti love each other. They love each other and they want to. But you've got to give them, the Shakti and Shiva, the chance to do that. And well, how do you do that? By calming down, by, 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 by removing as much of the obstructions as you can. 
And as far as I know, the most sustainable, that's a very key word, I microdosed for two years uh, because that was one way of doing it because it calms down the mind and energy flows. So I, I had a lot of energy, but later on, anyway, different video. But in my opinion, the most sustainable way of doing that is meditation. It's sustainable. It's something you can get up and do in the morning and you could do during the day and you could do at night. And I can't tell you. I can't tell you how powerful it is. You pick, pick the meditation you like. I like humming. I can hum. I, I mean, I start humming and, it, you know, I, I can't stop. I can't stop. Uh, you pick something, your favorite way of meditation, and you just stick to it. Stick to it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. You think I'm humming and the thoughts suddenly calm down? No, they're invading me all over. And I'm just like, I, I see, I get sucked in one, and then I'm like, back to the, and then I just keep humming. I keep humming, and I, I close my eyes, and I feel the humming, you know, activates your third eye. So I just, I keep humming, and I keep focusing on my third eye. A thought pops here, pops there. I keep doing it. And you just, you know after a while, because you feel the energy begins to rise up. And then, in that, because now, you know, thoughts create reality. Your mind creates matter, right? If you're trying to deal with the foods and you don't want as much food in your system, the least amount of obstructions, you do that. And pretty soon, it's like, if you've ever done, if you ever took an LSD or took a, took a microdose, you know you don't want to eat. Why do you not, why do you not want to eat? You don't want to eat because you're, you're operating at a higher consciousness where you're so in the here and the now. And you're so uh, fulfilled by the moment and feeling energy. You don't feel lack. You don't feel like you're being drained from energy. So then naturally you eat less. Naturally. It's like, I, I, you know, the more I meditate, I don't have to try. I don't have to try it. I, I don't have to go in my mind. You know, I, I mentioned in a previous video how I was doing this mantra like Saeed eats every other day. Which, by the way, I, I, I am not eating every other day. It's, I'm, I'm sort of, it's kind of all over the place right now. Sometimes I'll eat every other day. Sometimes I eat every day. But I'm not doing that mantra anymore. Because I'm doing these, like, I'm just humming, basically. Humming and saying, you know, thank you in these higher uh, consciousness type mantras. Like, you know, appreciation, gratitude, etc. Chants, if you will. Like, I do a chant in the morning. I do a chant in the morning called, I love you. Just say, I love you, right? And I just keep saying it and it fills you with energy. The energy of love. So, uh, but, you know, I... Uh, I just, I, you know, even when I eat, it's like, it's very little now. It's like, it's like a little, little thing. And I'm like, I'm full. Because, you know, I don't have to even do the chant anymore and say, Saeed, go into my mind and say, well, okay, we got to eat less now or this. It's happening naturally. And, and you know, Eli Tami Lamin, who's a breatharian, you know, you can watch him on YouTube. He's got a saying, he's like, you know, eat your way into breatharianism. Breatharianism is the practice of being sustained off this energy that I'm talking about so much so that you don't, you don't need food anymore, really. And I, I could totally see that now because it's not about not eating. Uh, it's simply about calming the mind. It's about, you know, being here and now and plugging into this source of energy that's everywhere, waiting to flow, waiting to flow, begging to flow. Just, you know, you've got to basically uh, uh, remove the obstructions in, in doing these practices. So, uh, but what he says is, he says, eat your way to breatharianism, meaning just keep eating. Don't, don't change anything. Don't fast, don't do anything. Just, he says, Stay consistent with the meditations. He says meditation is the foundation. Totally agree. From now, personal experience of really, really keeping a consistent meditation practice. Absolutely. Meditation is the foundation to any, any fulfilling life. Uh, and he says, just keep meditating. Let the light purge you. Those are his words. Exactly. Let the light purge you. It's funny because, I, you know, I do the, the, the humming with the, with the, with the blindfold med, uh, meditation thing on, right? And I start to see lights here after a while. So it is, it is literally let the light purge you. Let it purge you, let it purify you and, and uh, flow with it. So yeah, that's uh, something I really wanted to share in this video. And I would like to send my deepest gratitude to the Patreons who are supporting this channel. Uh, and I absolutely love you guys. I absolutely appreciate every single one of you now, 29 of you. And I appreciate all the folks who uh, make the one-time donations on PayPal. You guys are very awesome and generous, every single one of you. If you would like to support this channel, you believe in it, uh, and it helped you, and you have a little bit of money to throw, there's an opportunity to become part of the Patreon family. Uh, butterfly. There is uh, an opportunity for you to be part of the Patreon family. You could do so with as little as $2 a month. 
again the channel keeps growing we keep growing in the patreons and and uh once we have the solid support and enough money coming in uh we host retreats we host retreats in this beautiful mountain town pi uh and it's really cheap here you know everything is so cheap uh so you know if once we have enough support on patreon then uh, it'll be cheap to it'll be cheap for you to come to do the treat because then all the costs will be covered you just pay the ticket and the ticket you know thailand's a popular destination so to get a return ticket a two-way ticket from anywhere in the world it's very affordable actually it's very affordable so make it affordable for everybody so uh that's the projects in the in, in the future uh and we'll know when it's time for it, when there is enough support and there, and just the flow of the moment comes and says, well, it's time for retreats now, right? Uh, so thank you, everybody. I uh, love you, appreciate you. Until next time, though, may the force. I was watching, by the way, I was watching Star Wars yesterday. So may the force be with you.